Hello there, welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. Today is really a nib review or a nib comparison or a showdown, I don't know, something like that. When I bought this Jinhao 80, I thought I wouldn't like it, but since I've replaced the nib with a genuine Lamy, I've grown to love it. And this nib isn't just any Lamy. It's the very special Lamy Cursive Black Nib and I'm loving writing with it. I like the Jinhao 80 so much, when they came out with new colors, I bought four more of them. I'm just waiting for that slow boat to arrive with them. I'm still waiting on a few things on that slow boat. The Pen BBS 308 in Niangao that I ordered a month and a half ago has finally made it into Canada. Just a small shout out to everyone at Pen BBS in Shanghai. Hang in there folks, you've endured months of shutdowns and now a typhoon. I hope you're all safe and healthy. And I purchased another Jinhao X159, this time with gold hardware and in a lovely burgundy color. So that's something to look forward to as well. And when I reviewed the X159, I mentioned that if Jinhao came out with a piston filler version of the X159, I'd be all over it like Tom Cruise on Katie Holmes. Have you ever felt this way? But Majon beat Jinhao to the punch and came out with this new P136 that looks just like a Jinhao X159, not to mention the Mont Blanc 149, and it's a piston filler. So I'm waiting on that pen as well. But back to today's nib comparison. To complete the arrival of four new Jinhao 80s, I went looking for Lamy style replacement nibs for them because the stock nibs are way too thin for my taste. And I found this. It's a Chinese Naginata Togi style nib grind on a Chinese Lamy style nib. Well, I just had to try it out, so I bought the nib. But when the package arrived, it was attached to a pen. I was totally surprised as the listing said nothing about a pen. I had to do some research to find out that the pen is a Jinhao 35. So in addition to seeing how the Chinese Naginata Togi, it's not a real Naginata Togi, stacks up against Lamy's cursive nib, I'll be reviewing this Chinese steel nib holder as well, right now. So I finally have a tracking number on a package from China that I recognize, but it feels like a full pen. I only ordered a nib. So let's open this up and find out what's going on here. Some kind of a silver pen. Oh, sliding all the way out here without the... There we go. Okay, this is a Jinhao. Yeah, I didn't order a Jinhao, I didn't think. Here's the order, I'll just put it up here on the screen of what I ordered. And it didn't say anything about a Jinhao, and it said it was only the nib. There's the nib, but they attached it to a pen. It's one of those uh, Chinese calligraphy nibs, very similar to the Pen BBS calligraphy nibs I've got a few of but it's the Lamy style. So I was actually just getting the nib to put on a Jinhao, but I don't even know what model this is. And it's a cartridge converter. Very light pen. Looks like a large bore. I'll have to check that out. Well, maybe I'll have to do some research to find out what model Jinhao this in fact is. There are thousands and thousands of Jinhao models of pens, of course. It's very slick. Very slick. Well, that's interesting. We'll have to see whether I can write with this pen. Uh, but mostly, I was interested in the nib. And here's my Jinhao 80. I've got the Lamy uh, cursive nib on, that black cursive nib. And we'll have to give that a try in that pen. Interesting. In pen reviews, I talk about the parts and features of the pen, do size comparisons, show measurements, and then do a writing sample. But since I didn't really order this Jinhao 35, and quite frankly, I don't like the pen at all, we can cut to the chase and just compare this unknown brand Lamy style nib, uh, ground in the Naginata Togi style, with this, what Lamy calls a cursive 
nib and see how they write. I'm going to talk about the features of both nibs and do some writing samples for comparison. Then I'm going to see how the nibs swap from this pen onto my Jinhao 80. So let's do a brief overview of this steel tube nib holder. It's a steel tube with a converter and it's a nib holder. The nib is a Lamy style with a Lamy style feed. The pen has a clip which works and tapers ever so slightly here so that the cap can post. The section is the same kind of steel as the cap and the barrel and is very very slippery with no taper and is already scratched up from capping and uncapping for just a week. The pen isn't very heavy but the edge of that cap right there is sharp on your hand when you post it. There is a small plastic cap liner deep inside there and a brass bolt to hold the top finial on and then there's a stainless steel end finial plug that goes into the other end of that tube. The converter has a Parker sized opening and so the pen does take Parker sized long cartridges and there you have it a light stainless steel like tube with a converter and it's a nib holder. I bought this pen from a shop called Lucifer or is that Lusfer? On AliExpress and having now just looked at the invoice I see it says Jinhao 35 even though the original item listing doesn't say anything about Jinhao it says hand polished aircraft nib 26 slash 35 millimeter bright nib calligraphy signature writing practice word small dark long knife shaped pen nib which is a lot of Chinese nonsense I paid a total of $14.92 US including shipping for the pen I'm now seeing listings for the nib and the feed alone for $3.95 US with free shipping. Let's get a close look at this nib since it's the whole reason for the purchase in the first place. It has a logo engraved on it that I cannot identify. It's an M with a slash through it or a swoop through it. Your guess is as good as mine but I don't believe it stands for medium. The grind on the large tip is the main feature here. It's clearly ground in the Naginata Togi style and for the anally retentive and politically correct crowd that never get invited to cool parties I will provide this disclaimer. This is not, I repeat, not a Naginata Togi nib nor should it be confused as being in any way even close to being a Naginata Togi nib. You see Naginata Togi nibs are only made by Sailor and it is a grinding technique that goes back to the company's founding in 1911. Nagahara Nobuyoshi, who apprenticed at Sailor from 1947, and his colleague Koyama Gunichi revived the grinding style in the early 90s, and the nibs are only available on the Sailor 1911 large model. That being said, this nib displays the behavior seen from the Naginata Togi nib. That is, it creates different line thicknesses depending on the angle of the nib to the page as well as the vertical and the horizontal stroke. If you look closely, you'll see the unique pear shape on the tip of that nib. When it's 90 degrees to the page, the line is thin. When you lower the angle, the line gets thicker. The lower you lower the pen angle to the page but also a vertical stroke is thin and a horizontal stroke is thick in the manner of an architect the flexibility of getting so much line variation by just changing the pen angles and directions lends itself to the eastern style of kanji writing hence its popularity in japan but the nib is also a lot of fun for cursive writing and printing now let's get a close look at the Lamy cursive nib. I'm still confused as to why it's called cursive and it has Chinese writing on it here that translates as Chinese or China. I'm told that this is to indicate that this nib is adept at writing kanji characters. Regardless, when you look at the footprint of the Lamy cursive nib, you'll see none of the characteristics of a Naginata Togi. They never claimed it was a Naginata Togi, I'm just comparing. To start with, the cursive here is a lot smaller than the Chinese calligraphy nib. The grind looks more like an architect, although the behavior ends up being very, very subtle. I'll show some measurements of the Jinhao 35 before we get down to some writing samples 
with this and the Lammy Curse of Nib. And we're back with the writing sample portion of this nib review. This is the Jin Hao 35. Let's just write that down. Jin Hao 35. Okay. So this was open for a while. There. So this is the Jin Hao 35. And it has a... A generic I don't know what to call it an M with a stroke through it calligraphy let's call it a calligraphy let's call it a calli let's call it a calligraphy let's call it a calligraphy nib if I can pronounce calligraphy properly it's easier than nagi not a togi and this is Clairefontaine 90 GSM paper by the way if you didn't already know that and let's start by looking at the characteristics of this non Naginata Togi style nib that writes like a Naginata Togi but isn't. Run! It's Godzilla! It looks like Godzilla, but due to international copyright laws, it's not. First, to the angle of the pen. I'm going to start by going 90 degrees to the paper. I'm going to be blocking my camera here, but you'll get the idea. And at 90 degrees, the lines are identical at 0 0.1 millimeters, horizontally and vertically. And then we drop down to 60 degrees. And the lines are 0 0.2 and 0 0.3 millimeters respectively and then we drop down to 45 which is almost a normal writing angle for me and you see we start seeing that behavior of the thinner vertical and the thicker horizontal but also the vertical is getting thicker as well uh, so this is 0 0.4 on the verticals sorry this is 0 0.2 on the verticals and 0 0.4 on the horizontals at 45 degrees and then we drop down to 30 degrees to the page and you can see that the verticals are still thin but the horizontals get very thick 0 0.3 for the verticals and 0 0.7 millimeters for the horizontals so for printing it gives some really nice character some very nice architect style character to the numerals and the letters in block printing uh, for writing there's lots of feedback as you'd expect uh, but it's very wet and very expressive so if you're a sketch artist this kind of behavior where you can get a thin line by raising your your pen angle and then getting a very broad marker like line like that this nib can be very versatile now let's check the Lamy cursive starting at 90 degrees again let's just put this down first this is the Lamy cursive can't spell today Lamy cursive nib getting lots of feedback you can hear that let's go 90 degrees to start so that's 90 degrees and it is 0 0.2 millimeters in both directions let's do 60 degrees 0 0.3 millimeters in both directions 45 sort of a normal writing angle for me 45 degrees and at 45 degrees it's 0 0.4 millimeters and at 30 degrees it doesn't seem to make all that much difference uh, when you get lower it's still 0 0.4 millimeters but as you can hear uh, 
this nib has lots of feedback it's very very wet a very very wet nib and it writes a line that hasn't got a lot of variation to it but it does have a slightly architect feel to it um, so even though I'm not seeing a large difference between my horizontals and my verticals I'm getting that feedback experience of an architect nib and I quite like writing with this nib it's fast with lots of feedback but it has none of the variation and variety of the non nagi natatogi uh, Chinese calligraphy nib so even though the Lamy cursive nib doesn't have as dramatic a range as the non nagi natatogi it's a lot of fun with to write and especially to print with as to how well each of these nibs would fare in writing kanji characters well you're barking up the wrong fish here mm, well pull in your reel mr fielding you're barking up the wrong fish now let's see if i can swap the chinese funky m nib out of this jinhao 35 and put it onto my jinhao 80. some viewers commented that getting the nib off the jinhao 80 wasn't as easy as how i demonstrated it in my video uh, with the scotch tape it's true that i had to coax the nib a little with a jeweler's screwdriver to get it started but another viewer suggested duct tape that's d-u-c-t tape not d-u-c-k tape folks in my former theater film and television career we called it gaffer's tape those in the business will know what a gaffer is if you don't know what these particular film professions of gaffer grip best boy are it's just too glamorous a profession to be described accurately so let's see if i can use some gaffers tape to pull off these nibs we're going to do this as a hot swap again folks because we're just wild and crazy guys we are two wild and crazy guys gaffers tape on that nib and give it a horizontal pull Well, that's a very slippery nib and that's not very good well that gaffer's tape didn't work very well at all so i'm using scotch tape again and i'm going to put it on the top of the nib and a kleenex on the bottom and just pull and there we go and we're going to do the same thing with the jinhao 35 put the scotch tape across the nib hold it in the bottom as well and pull that nib out of there so there are the two nibs and we'll just grab the calligraphy nib and i'm just going to line up the nib with those rails again i'm doing this over my camera you can damage those little plastic rails so it's really important to get them lined up before you push and then just give it a push and now let's see if we can write with this Jinhao 80 with a, I'm going to call it a generic Chinese calligraphy nib. There we go. It's not all that wet, but it does give you plenty of line variation very fast actually this is a lot of fun now and the pen does make a difference so it's not just a nib holder uh, this chrome pen uh, not interested in it at all but this Jinhao 80 with that new calligraphy nib is very nice okay so likes and dislikes first to the Jinhao 35 I don't like it I won't write with it the only redeeming feature of the pen is the nib which will stay off this pen I'll probably swap this nib onto one of my four new Jinhao 80s arriving any time now and as to the non nagi natatogi unknown brand calligraphy nib I love it it isn't something that I would write with every day, 
but I think when I put it in one of my new Jinhao 80s, uh, I'll ink it up with this new ink that I've just received. I ordered it back in the beginning of June. It must be very popular because it just came in last week and it's from Ferris Wheel Press and it's in this little uh, round 20 milliliter bottle and it's called Tumbling Time Blue and you might be able to see that it has a silver shimmer to it. And here is my swatching of this new ink from Ferris Wheel Press. This is on Tomoe River uh, paper and it's Tumbling Time Blue. Uh, this was done with my glass dip pen. You can see there's a deep dark rich blue uh, but it has plenty of red sheen. Look at that. Look at that red sheen on it. And when it dries, maybe you can see it, maybe you can't, it has a really nice silver sparkle to it. And since we're talking about new inks and Christmas, I'm pleased to announce that I'll be receiving the 2022 Diamine Ink Event calendar and we'll be creating 24 or 25 short videos demonstrating each color and releasing those videos every day from December 1st through December 24th or 25th, depending on how many days come with the pack. Something to look forward to. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And please look in the description for a link to Goldspot Pens as I'm now an affiliate of the online store. And when you shop at Goldspot using my link, you'll be supporting my channel as well at no extra charge to you. You can also join as a member of my channel for only 99 cents a month and I guarantee I'll answer your comments in the comment section and you'll get cool emojis, badges, and sneak peek unboxing videos as well. And that just leaves it for me to say thank you. For watching. And that's all she wrote. I made this.